Welcome to our next talk at the Perspectives on Light seminar or summit, whatever you want to call it. Uh, today, I'm really excited to have the chance to be leading a conversation with Harrison from Australia. He is a host of the Cosmic Love Antenna podcast. And this is a really fun um, switch of roles here because I've been interviewed twice on Harrison's wonderful podcast. And if you haven't had a chance to listen to it yet, uh, maybe you could type it in the chat, Harrison. I would love for people to be able to tune into that. Um, Harrison has a real gift for diving into the heart space and bringing everyone along with him. So it's a real exciting moment to have this conversation with you, Harrison, and welcome to the Perspectives on Light Summit. I'm so excited. I'm just writing it down in the in the chat. It's a pleasure to be here, Alison. And we were just chatting before we started recording. It's so nice to be blasted with your loving energy. It's morning here in Australia. So this is me sort of waking up and I'm excited to get into the dance. Wonderful. So with that waking up metaphor, let's jump right in. Um, so I would love to if you could share a little bit about your journey with everyone so far, mm. about your experience of this process of waking up when you discovered the Lucia and how yeah. the Lucia has started to play into what you're offering and who you are. Yeah, so it's really nice to be here in this summit because I've I've personally reflected on how the Lucia has impacted my awakening process but i haven't had the opportunity to speak about it you know publicly in relationship to my awakening so it's so nice to have this opportunity so without a too in-depth story as a little boy i grew up in this big world that we're all part of as a as a being that suppressed a lot of what he was i was told as an example growing up that men should not be sensitive, a boy should not be emotional. So whenever I had my intuitive gifts coming up and I wanted to express myself in all the wonderful ways, I uh, pushed it down because I wanted to fit in. I pushed it down because I wanted to belong. I pushed it down because I wanted to have friends and eventually intimate partners, etc. So fast forward many years as an adult, as a man now getting into the world, I was suppressing most of who I am and what I am. And it wasn't until I actually started connecting to the Lucia light amongst some other things that my inner light started to expand. And as I started to incorporate the light into my world and eventually started supporting other people with it, I noticed these beautiful sensitivities, my intuition and some of the other more mystical things we'll talk about here today, starting to reawaken and that little boy that wanted to express all that what he was, was now bubbling back up into the surface. Mm, that's so beautiful. And where did you first experience the Lucia? Or how did you, could you tell a story of how you became acquainted with her? So I was listening to a particular podcast with a special person that is interviewing me right now on this call. Miss Allison was chatting about this amazing technology that was the Lucia Light on, I think it was the Lifestylist podcast many years ago now. And as I tend to do with most things in my life, I open my heart to conversations and information and education <clears throat> that activates me, that stimulates me, that, you know, gives me that channel that's a bit out of the ordinary versus other pieces of information. And so I heard you speaking on this show and you, your beautiful love and your beautiful passion about, you know, everything that we're a part of right now. And that was the hit. That was the, I didn't know what it was. I didn't understand it fully, but there was something inside of me that was directing me towards, okay, I need to find out more. 
And I think actually, if I remember right, I think I messaged you directly and you sent me the details of the Australian distributor here down under. And I contacted her, we worked it all out. And I think about a month later, I had the home portal in my, in my home and I started going deep. Amazing. And yeah, I love that. And I feel like that's a really resonant uh, statement there for a lot of people that may be listening to this. There's something about the Lucia. I know Tina mentioned it as well, that as soon as she kind of tuned in to the energy of Lucia, there was something that was just such a yes there, that there was that invitation to lean in. And thanks for and, sharing that. Mm -hmm. And I'll just say, Alison, one more thing on it. You know, it's, and this is, this is, not a Lucia thing. This is a descriptor of anything that's aligned with our divine path, but it was easy, right? It just, everything flowed. And I think the magic that the Lucia connects to it's in my experience, it's more conducive to creating those kinds of experiences versus maybe some other things. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. It's like a, you get a hit that is a tool that can help you find something within yourself. And really that's what it's all about for all of us, right? Is how we, yeah, which of these tools we can use to come home. And this was a great one for you. Uh, and Danny was asking, uh, how many years ago was it that you got your release? Yeah, I think it was three years ago now. Years ago. I mean, two and a half, three years ago. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, pretty, pretty recent, but you've gone very deep with it. And it's just really been a joy to witness the transformation that you've gone through, which again, like Lucia was a tool to help with that. But I know it's come from, you know, the true you being able to feeling like it has permission and being invited to step forward. Yeah. So. And, and I just say that, and we'll speak about this later in terms of some other stuff I want to talk about, but it was my ability and I share this for everyone tuning in, whether you are a practitioner or you're interested in Lucia in general, or this is just totally all new to you. It was my ability to open my heart, right? It was my willingness to just open myself fully to this that accelerated its growth, right? I, I noticed a direct connection to the degree in which I opened myself and then the results that then happened right? The, the people that came into my life, the abilities that unlocked the, you know, the continued journey, you know, just exacerbated in direct relationship to my ability to feel more love for myself. Mm, that's really beautifully put. And there's, a, there's some agreement there from the, the chat of people who are listening. So yes, absolutely. And so to rewind again, a little bit further, I'm curious um, if you could share a little bit about your relationship to your body and how that has changed with the Lucia light and, you know, and, and maybe your, about your occupation before and how yeah. you're shifting that. I'm still working with it in different ways. Yeah. So when the Lucia came into my world, I was a personal trainer. So I was solely focused on the physical body and it's beautiful and and i still do that now to a degree but i'll get to that later but when the lucia came in it again gave me permission to add in the spiritual energetic and emotional side to our physical being a a very you know, funny example and highlight of this I remember as a personal trainer before the Lucia, you know, I was very uh, physically based, right? I would be helping people and focusing on their sets and the, and the machines and their muscles and all the important things that we need to focus on. But then as Lucia came into my life and I was still personal training, in between sets and the muscles and all the things, I would be the personal trainer that would be asking each client about their emotional well-being and how their how their relationships on the weekend were going and how they actually felt about their occupation and their work and you know funny conversations aside what I was noticing was 
there was a, a deeper spirit inside of me that was starting to, you know, work itself through the physical, right? And fast forward now, you know, a big part of that was coming to the understanding that as spiritual beings, we didn't come here just to be in the etheric. We didn't come here just to be in the beautiful cosmic or mystical heights. We came here to be in the physical body. And, you know, as I reflect back on that time as a personal trainer, that was having that emotional interaction with all the clients. In many ways, it was showing me that. It was showing me the beautiful necessity for the physical body and the need to nourish it and also adding in the emotional energetic and spiritual side as well and i very much you know embody that now as the person i show up as in the world mm, that's so beautiful yeah and i love what you said about you know we're here like spiritual beings to have here to have a human experience and so I'm I'm curious at this juncture if you could share a little bit more about your current work with clients yeah. and, and you know that evolution from a state where you're in asking them about emotions in between and then starting to work with the Lucia yourself and yeah, yeah what what you're creating now. <laughs> yeah, and I laugh because if if I had the ability to, you know, go through time. And I'm me, Harrison, now speaking to that Harrison in the gym three years ago. Uh, it would be a very interesting conversation. But fast forward, basically what happened, and Lucia was you know, 100% the stimulus for this. I opened Pandora's box, and I see in Pandora's box, in this metaphor, in this analogy, was my heart, and specifically my multidimensional spiritual cosmic heart and what i mean by that for people that are maybe new to that is as a spiritual being it's not just a sort of black and white there's a human and then there's a spiritual soul right there's so much beautiful nuance that is in between those two parts of us and what lucia sort of stimulated was a deep dive into our multi-dimensional nature as a as a soul as a spirit that's having a human experience and basically my work started to reflect this beautiful expansion of of consciousness inside of me and now in my work i really focus in on a lot of intuitive channeling taking people deeper into their spirit's journey into their nature connecting them to higher consciousness, their higher self, their divine presence, their guides, their ancestors, all these sort of things. But the interesting part in relation to Lucia is the light helped me connect to my light channel. The light helped me to see that Lucia was never giving me anything. Lucia was never, you know, giving me the experiences that I was moving through or, you know, adding something on, it was showing me the divine channel of consciousness that I always was, but now I was stepping into fully. And that is really a big part of the work I do now in the world. Mm, so beautiful. Yes. And this is a, you know, a beautiful topic that different uh, light guides have come to in different ways. And even Dirk was just speaking to that incredible light of oneness, right? That's behind all of it. And then that layer of the self and the higher self, right? And your centering that yeah. comes back into focus when we, when we release all that we are mm. not and all our fears of being who we are not. And, yeah. you know, and I'm impressed too, because I, I know that there's some people who, you know, if you bought a light without ever, experiencing it um or got one got a hold of one um you know what i'm curious about that first session that you had like <laughs> what did you do like you know i i try to recommend for people that they create a sacred space for themselves and open it and to be honest you know as someone who does sell lucia lights i i get a little nervous sometimes that someone who's never tried it before and even with so much passion and excitement 
that there's uh, like a little fear inside of me that, you know, they won't necessarily have uh, the ability to hold space for themselves or, you know, or the ability on the other side to let go, right? That sometimes when we're doing sessions on our own, we don't necessarily have a breakthrough. So my question for you is, how was that first session? And did you prepare yourself for it? Or how did that kind of roll out afterwards? So the short answer is I freaked out, right? That 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 first session was was mind blowing. And I know I know that you've I'm not sure where you stand on this now, Alison, but I know in the past you've you've equated the Lucia Light as a plant medicine experience. And you know, it it I don't know if I would make that connection now, but I it was the same in terms of it's just ability to blow me out of what was familiar and that's what it was for me it was just a all of my perceptions of reality were just in one moment thrown out the door and luckily I I, like I said I connected to Nancy who's the Australian distributor and at the time and I just I have so much love for her because I don't think she understood what she was taking on when she accepted my um (laughs) <laughs> my call but uh, she ended up you know supporting me and, and coaching me through everything that I was awakening to at the moment so that first experience you know I did freak out a little bit and it was sort of my mind was blown but I also had her on speed dial and I was texting her about all these things and asking you know what, what does this mean why does my chest feel on fire why do I you know feel all these sensitivities and all this stuff and and she was walking me through it and eventually you know, just, I just kept showing up for myself. I kept, you know, at the point in time, luckily I had a really strong, like I said before, a really strong physical self-care devotional practice. So I was able to nourish and support myself within that sort of freak out that was going through me to be able to sustain it, right. To be able to keep showing up to moving into the unknown and opening myself to this new reality that I still, even despite all of the fear, all of the strangeness of it, there was this still this force inside of me that was saying, keep going, keep, keep moving, keep taking the next step, keep texting Nancy, keep putting on the light. And um, it eventually sort of uh, stabilized and I was able to understand and take in what was actually happening. Hmm. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of us can, can relate to that. I know with my own journey, the first session I had with Nigel at Light Eye Mind was so powerful, but then I remember getting the lamp myself and yeah, being so excited about it. I was doing so many sessions per day and wow, just really, you know, downloading, if you could say all kinds of information from the light. And I was changing so quickly, especially in those early days. So anyone out there that's, you know, just getting involved or, you know, maybe has taken a little step back from their light because it seemed overwhelming at times, you're, you're not alone, you know, and, and on the other hand, if you are having trouble dropping in to the experience yourself that, you know, that's, that could be an invitation for someone to come and sit with you and be there with you, even if they're not an official space holder, because there's an opportunity, you know, for some of us being alone is a really, a really beautiful way to let go. And for others, you know, being with someone can really help them, them go deeper. Yeah. yeah. And I'll just add to that, Alison, before you move on, you know, it's, I'll just speak to the men out there listening, you know, for me being a masculine body, you know, divine masculine, divine feminine is is in both of us, right? But in the masculine physical body, the the masculine energy tends to be more strong. And I found that it was it was nice to bounce my experiences off someone, right? That it was nice to be alone to a degree and feel all the things, but having someone there to articulate and express, especially the emotions that were coming up. And I, and another another person there holding that container really allowed myself to keep surrendering, to keep going because that masculine side was being soothed. So it could continue to create the container for myself to go further. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. I love how you put that. And 
Absolutely. Everyone is different. And actually something I wanted to circle back to that I found really interesting was, you know, the aspect of your physical practice of self-care being so important to helping you regulate and everything like that. And I've, I found in the spiritual community, sometimes people kind of bypass their physical body in certain ways. And especially around the area of exercise, you know, I think there's more awareness around, um, you know, maybe food or habits like that, you know, but then when it comes to exercise and, you know, really strengthening the physical body, I've personally found that like, wow, if you want to be able to hold your frequency, right. Cause as we, as we're going through this accelerator of becoming more insensitive, more aware, more in tune, um, you know, and, you know, someone asked in another panel, like, how do you protect yourself during a light session? And I think this is very tied in, you know, there's something about working with the physical body that, that, you know, works through every layer and, and on the energetic level allows you to hold space. So did you find that for yourself that it was for, um, like, like that physical work was for processing, for holding your energy or was it most beneficial? Yeah. I'm so passionate about this component, Alison, because it's everything what you're saying. And I truly believe that at that point in my journey, this, one of the reasons I was experiencing this, this personal trainer life and Lucia simultaneously was to see this necessity. I am for people wondering the reason I call my show The Cosmic Love Antenna, and I also have a book out by the same name, is I like to use that image of an antenna system, right? And an, an antenna system has two main parts, right? It has the internal frequency, which I would equate here as the spirit and the consciousness of love that we are, but it also has the internal physical structure. And if anyone has used any kind of antenna system, you know, based off how strong or how, you know, upright and and vibrant that antenna system structure is will impact its ability to spread that frequency, right? To spread that consciousness. So we are the same, right? Our physical being, we're not just here to be a physical uh, soul. The The physical aspect of us impacts the soul. Right. So if I am looking, I'll just give one example of this, right? We know through, you know, psychology now that your body keeps score, right? Your body tells the story of your life from a trauma perspective, from a, you know, moving through emotional dis-ease and challenge perspective. So the degree in which you have a practice around yoga, for example, where you are holding poses for certain amounts of time and allowing that energy to release itself is going to impact your stability. It's going to impact how you're showing up in the world, whether you're showing up in a chronic fight or flight state, or whether you're showing up as a person that is able to get into rest and digest and come back to homeostasis, right? And that's just one example. So it's it's not a an or conversation of I need to be spiritual or I need to be physical. It's an and conversation. I need both because the way that I do one thing is the way that I do all things. Hmm, I really, yeah, love that and resonate with that. And yeah, so it's also good just check in for anyone. If you feel like you're really working on one area to tune in, to make sure that all the areas are receiving the same amount of love. Cause I know sometimes we prioritize or have favorites, right. In different areas. <laughs> so, And that's totally normal. And self-care means all of them. Yeah. And I'll I'll add another image here, right? I after I became a personal trainer, I sort of shifted into health coach health coaching and specifically, you know, holistic health coaching. And the image of being this this soul moving through time and space, we are holistic soul, right? And what that means is it's very I grew up in a world that I'm sure everyone here can relate to that taught us that we were separate in terms of not just externally separate, but separate in terms of, I have my emotional health, I have my physical health, I have my mental health, right? I have a, I have my heart up here, my stomach down here, my brain up here. But that separation, much like all separation, is an illusion, right? We are a beautiful holistic being or system of systems that is moving throughout time and space dynamically. 
So simply what that means is, you know, the, the heart, the heart impacts the brain, the brain impacts the heart, the stomach impacts the brain. It's, it's all connected. So if we're looking to sort of show up in the world in our fullest expression, that holistic understanding in my experience is one of the ways we do that. Mm, beautiful. Yes. Holistic interaction. And it all comes to that one, right? So if one piece is really out of balance, then we, we can't really achieve that oneness the same way, or we can't last in it. You know, people have these big awakening moments, but if you want to start kind of grounding it, it means you have to be actually in your body. And I know yeah. that can be, have you had any clients with that where they're kind of in that frequency space, but then they're actually very disconnected from yeah. their physical body? Uh, many. It's my favorite client to get because it's, you have to remind them, and you don't have to do anything, but I lovingly encourage them to see that they're here for a reason. And what I mean by that is <clears throat> one of the reasons I've seen people stay off in space and blast off into space and stay there is because it feels wonderful. And I agree. It, it you know, if you want to look at it from a, a star seed perspective, and for people new to that term, how I would describe it is that you know, many of our souls didn't originate on earth, right? Many of our souls have a celestial history so when we have a lucia light experience and we blast off into space and connect back into those celestial connections a part of our soul could want to stay there because it's from there right it has family there has past there has experiences there but it's in that moment what i've found has been effective to help with that is reminding the soul that they are here on earth right now for a reason right they are here in 3D form on the, the planet that is Earth at this time to add their unique frequency to this existence. And it's really a sort of not just sharing to the voice of that, but a sharing of the frequency of that that can help that coming back down and anchoring into Earth because it's we all forget this. We all forget that we're here for a very important expansion. And we could have many deep dives about all of that. But just to put it simply, when we hold that in our heart, that tends to be the anchor that connects us back into the earth heart so we can ground into our physical again. Yes. And I love how you brought the earth into the conversation too, <laughs> as part of our grounding and physical form. Oh. Um, do you encourage practices with your clients for connecting with the earth or how do you invite yeah. Yeah. So another big topic, but I'll give one little tool and practice that I use. I, in my energy work, I connect to the chakra system, as I'm sure many people here know and understand. But a teaching and a practice that I've come to around the chakra system that I think most people overlook is that we have a chakra that is part of us that is also connected to the earth. And I'm not talking about the root chakra, the root chakra, it, it connects to the earth, but there is a chakra called the earth heart chakra that is in the center of mother earth that is also linked to our soul. So put simply, what we can do when we want to ground into her and remember our mission and come back into the 3D form is that we can remember and picture and feel this earth heart chakra opening up through the core of mother earth and holding us right? Holding us and soothing us and allowing a space for us to release and surrender and be held in. And I found both personally and with working with people that that earth heart chakra doesn't just ground us, but it also helps us integrate because the Lucia light is just one example, but I, I'm going off into all channeling experiences here we get disconnected. Another reason we get disconnected is because we don't integrate, right? We don't integrate the teachings and the things that are coming through. And I found connecting to that earth heart also has that little bonus as well. Mm, so beautiful. Yes. I love that energetically connecting to the earth, 
Have you ever experienced a Lucia light session on the earth yet? No, I haven't. Only only indoors on my bed. So I might have to check that out. Yeah, totally. <laughs> For anyone who's listening, I just felt inspired in the moment to share because one thing that I found really powerful is actually taking your lamp and you can get a little uh, portable battery and you can take it out into nature and have a light experience. So I highly recommend that. Um, do be aware that dusk is kind of a wild time to do it because of bugs so um a lot, we're not the only ones drawn to the light and so just to keep that in mind um but yeah but it can also so if you wait till it's actually totally dark that's better or if you're in shade and you can even mm. put a little you know blanket over it or something like that love it. you can get a little darker but yeah but that's great and I mean I think you know I definitely feel inspired to bring that more into my meditation yeah when I lead people before the light, I usually have them drop down into the earth um, and yeah. connect with that unconditional love that's really holding us. Yeah. So, I love and how you. Mm -hmm. Let me add one more to the more piece to this, Alison, because I feel it's resonating with everyone, you know, in that connection to the earth. And I love your practice and I'm definitely going to check that out and tune into it in this connection to the earth. Another thing that we start to realize is and we remember that the earth is a soul, much like us, but she isn't just a, sh a soul. She is a soul that we have a, a soul contract with, right? And like any soul contract, there, is, there are lessons, there are teachings, there are things we can ask of her specifically. So for example, if you've done a Lucille Light session and you've blasted off into space and there has, has been some deep teachings and lessons and and you know, maybe you've moved through some trauma and you're really feeling fragile and needing some guidance, you can ask her directly, right? Because she is a soul that has is, is connected and corded to you for a reason. And that reason might very well be that Lucia light session that just gave you the download of your life. So it's it's not just letting her hold you and ground you and integrate you, but also asking her questions. Right, asking her the question related to the experience that you just had. Powerful. Yes. Yes. The earth has so much wisdom for us. And that leads me to a question about, you know, connecting with yourself in the light and also guiding people to connect with their guides. So I'm curious, first of all, about your own process of, you know, in this portal awakening, um, did you ever as a child feel like you had intuitive impulses or were connected? And how did you reawaken that as an adult? And how do you guide others to reawaken their own channel? Big question. <laughs> super, super big question. So, so like I said earlier in my story, uh, I think I did, I feel that I had that connection as a child, but because of the suppression and repression and I would also throw in, I grew up in a religious uh, culture and community and school. So a lot of uh, disconnection there came as well. So I had all those abilities, but shut them down and suppressed them. But then circling around to Lucia coming back into my life, it started to awaken again. And I guess one of the stories that experiences and stories that I had that uh, started to cement this and I then built some practices around was I connected to uh, an angel for the first time under the light. And up until this point, I had started you know, educating myself and understanding connections to ancestors, guides, angels, but I was yet to have a sort of full body uh, experience of what that felt like. And I was in the light one morning and I was connecting and I actually I had set the intention. I was like, I want to connect to an angel. And I, and I, I teach people this, I set the intention open, right? An intention should be open. It should not have any expectations or attachments. And it should just be an open-ended prayer that we have no attachment to, that we surrender into the highest good of it moving through us. And that's what I did. And I sat under the light. I think about a couple of minutes in, I started to feel my heart tingle. Like, oh, this is new. And this is a bit different to normal. And then 
a few moments later, I just, all I can explain is I had, my heart exploded with love. And I just had this full body wave of frequency and energy and, and love moved through me from the heart. And, you know, without going too much deeper into the story, it connected me into this angel consciousness that I then and continue to call to and connect to to this day. And that moment really taught me and showed me that we're never alone. We, we think we're alone as a human that's separated, but in reality there is, if God is everything, it's all around us pervasive all the time. And one of the ways that God consciousness and this universal love shows up is in these entities that are around us that we can call to at any moment in time. But we have to understand that these types of consciousness, and this is what I teach and this is what I practice and this is what I show people, these, these loving entities of consciousness, they respect free will. And what that means is, and the image that I always explain to highlight this is it's a meme on Instagram and you see that you see the earth and all these, all these, all these uh, thought bubbles of people saying, I'm alone. I wish there was help. I wish I could connect to something. I feel so isolated. And above the earth, there is this, there's the image of this army of angels just looking down and just waiting. And what are they waiting for? They're waiting for us to open our hearts. They're waiting for us to request. They're waiting for us to send a prayer, loving prayer of intention. And that is really what I do now. I connect to many different kinds of guides and entities, but it all starts with one, getting specific around what it is you wish to have guidance around, like getting familiar with the particular challenge and then leaning in with an open heart and remembering, and this is the most important piece that you are deserving of everything that comes your way, right? Because I, like I said earlier, I grew up in a religious culture and I actually was taught that we're not worthy to ask for specific entities or angels. We need to prove ourselves. We need to sacrifice ourselves. We need to, you know, fill, fill in the boxes, but we've always been worthy. We've always been valuable. We've always been enough. And this connects to these ki kinds of interactions with guides, with angels, with ancestors, with spirits, et cetera. Mm, so beautiful. So in a normal session with clients, like how do you work with clients regularly? Yeah. Do you, could you explain a little bit more about that? So I, it'll be different each time because I don't really have, I used to have a lot of structure, but then I realized that was inhibiting my channel. So it's, it'll be intuitively guided each session, but there is always a, deep journey into self that goes on. And in that deep journey into self, I, I create and channel the frequency, the frequency and the container needed for that person to connect into the lesson, the teaching, the consciousness, the piece of them that they need to receive. So let's say Alison comes to me with the intention of wanting to release some anger around her father, right? She would come to me, we would sit down, we'd talk a little bit, we'd coach a little bit about it, but then we'd sit down in a deep meditation together. I would open up my channel, I would call in all my guides, all of my support team, and then I would guide you through a deep activation and journey into self. And we'd sort of flow from there. It all depends on what comes up for you, what shadows, what emotions, what, what experiences you move through. But it usually ends with deep, deep guidance and healing, not from me, not I'm, I'm holding the container and channeling the frequency, the deep, deep guidance and the deep, deep healing comes from a deeper aspect of you. And in most cases, it's a part of you that you've yet to experience. Mm, beautiful. And how do you weave the Lucia light into a session like this? Yeah. So the light comes in and out. So as I've started to open my channel more, I've actually been using the light less and less. So the light actually comes in with requests. So if someone has done sessions with me in the past or 
has had one-on-one -on -one time with me we add in the light but uh it's a it's a request because i've found now that especially if people are more sensitive and more awakened the light is a bonus right the light is a little extra piece so if the person wants the lucia we get under the session we do that same thing that i just talked about but we just add the light Mm, beautiful yeah that's great and yeah that's the thing right it's a tool that we can or cannot use but when ultimately it's helping us to see who we are and what we have to offer so that's really beautiful thank you for demonstrating that um we have one question uh here from christine saying what part of australia are you in and what inspired you to have the desire to start a podcast oh good question <clears throat> So I'm on the east coast of Australia. I am a little in a little town called Coffs Harbour. It's in between Sydney and Brisbane for people that are unfamiliar with the location. It's a little beachy uh, retirement village. Very, uh, It's a nice little escape from everything. And in terms of starting a podcast, so that's a, sort of another big side of my awakening journey. Uh, one of my gifts that I have awakened to and that my channel has helped me to see is my voice, is the expression of frequency and <laughs> your big smile, Alison, because you experienced this, but the expression of my frequency through my voice, right? And we all have gifts. We all have particular ways that are unique to us that we use to channel our unique frequency of love that I call it. And for me, it, it has always been my voice. And this awakening process that the Lucia instigated in many ways helped me to see that my way, one of my ways is my voice. And the podcast was just the natural sort of step to take to start to flex that gift. Mm, beautiful. And there's been some kind of growth and evolution and magic in that gift, especially very recently. So um, I don't know if this is available to you right now, but uh, would you be open to reading one of your spoken word poems to <laughs> us here? <laughs> I would love to, Alison. I, I didn't expect you to ask that, but I'm so excited that you did. Yeah. Uh, so let me get. Yeah, well, you pull it up. I'll explain a little bit. So Harrison, in part of his evolution, has been coming up these words have been pouring through his heart and they've been really incredible. I know personally, I've been super touched by receiving them. So I thought it would be a really lovely way to close out today for him to share one of them with us. And I highly recommend you follow him for all kinds of inspiration and things like that. So he's the cosmic love antenna online. And then um, I guess you could follow your personal Facebook. Yeah. I'll put in, um, I'll put in my, my social. So I'm on everything, basically, Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, TikTok. So if you just look up that um, that username and you'll find me and then Cosmic Love Antenna, I'll put this in, is the name of my podcast, but also the name of my book. So if you've really been interested in all the topics I've been speaking about today, I speak about it in depth and connect it all together uh, in my book. And it's available on Amazon for people to check out. So podcast and the book itself are a really good way to tune more into my frequency and understand what I'm doing in this world. So uh, the poetry, just to give a little bit more here, Alison, the poetry, as you beautifully highlighted, appears to be the next step in my vocal expression. And it's another connecting of the, the physical to the emotional, energetic and spiritual, because I find poetry is a beautiful way to to heal to alchemize to i use it personally as a way to soothe my heart to bring a shadow that i'm currently moving through into the light through words but not just the writing of it not just the writing and the creating of the poem but i've also found equal healing equal soothing and I've done this with you, Alison, in the sharing of it through my voice, which connects back to the podcast and the journey that I've been on. So I'd love to share a poem that I wrote a couple of days ago with all of you. And it's based around the shadow of 
how I've noticed I don't just project my shadows onto people that I love. I also project my light that I've yet to accept in myself. So this poem is called Projecting and Accepting. In deep shadows cast upon my fragile, aching heart, where stories of beauty yearn to take their rightful part, I find myself in search of self-love yet untold, a romance story unwritten, waiting to unfold. But I often find within my own reflection a glimpse of imperfections, my own rejection. In my eyes that seek beauty, divine and protected, I project unto others all which I haven't accepted. For in their presence and their radiant expression, I borrow rays of sunlight, if just for a session. I paint their canvas with strokes, with strokes of my desire, hoping to extinguish my own internal raging fire. But deep inside, I know the truth that must be, that my loving answers are within, waiting to be free. For when I embrace the frequency of my soul, I see the world with eyes that remind me of my whole, no longer needing others as a projection or a mirror. I find my true beauty crystal clear and no shimmer. I'll learn to love all my choices and flaws oh so unique. And in the sacred love, my true divine beauty will peak. No longer shall I project my longing gaze to the external, but I'll bask in full self-acceptance, knowing my worth eternal. For embracing all that I am, all that I am can finally see, that I've always had the beauty I've been longing to be. Beautiful, just brought tears to my eyes. Yes, thank you, Harrison. Thank you so much for sharing. Ah, it's amazing what can come through when we open our channel, right? And Harrison, what a beautiful soul that you have coming through. Thank you so much for sharing with us and being here with us today. Um, yeah, follow Harrison, listen in, and just remind everyone else uh, what we have coming next. Actually, we're going to have a couple minutes break here. Uh, and then at two o'clock, we're going to just do a big Q&A about the light in general, about the Lucia light, um, or any other questions that you have uh, for Harris and I about our personal growth and journey through awakening. And then at, in one hour, you know, one hour after that, because the time's so different, I could say a time, but it wouldn't be really relevant for everyone. Um, but, you know, the last hour here and the last hour, I will be talking a little bit about ways we can get involved in community, some kind of future visions that I have that I'd love to invite everyone to join and just some kind of last inspiration. So I know it's been a long day for those who have been there the whole day. You can feel free to tune in for replays. But um, if you have any questions that are burning about the light or anything else um, on this on these topics, we would love to tune in with you in a few moments. So Thank you so much for sharing about your story, Harrison, sharing your magic with us, and we'll see you all in a little bit.